So hello everyone, uh, my name is Urs Kasser. I'm with the Berkman Klein Center for Internet and Society. I'm also involved with the Global Network of Internet and Society Centers. And today I have the great pleasure to uh, be in conversation with two colleagues from uh, Turkey, from Istanbul, Leila Kesser and uh, Bedi. Uh, who are both at the Bilgi IT Law Institute and have been uh, collaborating with the NOC for a couple of years. And it's so good to see you, although it would be much better in person, of course. Hi, Leila. Hi, 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 Betty. Hi, Urs. Thank you hi. so much. Very good. So I was hoping that we could just uh, maybe get started by hearing from you a little bit what the center is about, uh, what some of the areas are um, that you're focused on currently, um, how we work together. I think Betty just joined as a, as a director, uh, so it's great to meet you. And just, you know, share, start us off with sharing maybe a, a broad overview of, of what's happening also in Turkey and the work you're doing. So over to you guys. Um, Urs, thank you so much. Um, thank you so much for having us and this great opportunity to introduce our institute a bit more for other NOC members. Um, as you may know, we established in 2010 and um, actually we closed our IT Law Research Center, Resource Center, uh, which has been established in 2004. Uh, so we can say we transformed our IT Law Resource Center into Institute. And um, we have two layers um, within the Institute. We have education part and research part. Concerning the education part, we have IT Law Master Program since 2010. And as of this academic year, we have 67 students. And um, we have also courses for undergrad uh, students Actually, since 2015, IT law is one of the core course of the law faculty um, at uh, Istanbul University. And concerning the research part, um, except Bedi and me, we have PhD researchers and also already mentioned master program students. And one of the aim of our institute is we um, we gather all related stakeholders such as private sector companies, governmental institutions, NGOs, tech people, and academic people on internet related matters. And we call that multi, a multi stakeholder working model. And um, we did together wonderful things in Istanbul and starting from 2013 and in 14, we did two different um, events in Istanbul. And as you already mentioned, we have Istanbul Privacy Symposium since 2017, which is an uh, which is an NOC event and open for all NOC members. Um, what we are doing, except the research part, um, as an academic institution, we help public institutions, particularly on digital government, digital transformation, information society and we help preparing IT laws and regulations. We provide input for different projects under the topic digital transformation, etc. cetera. And um, so the IT law is overarching and our research topics are very broad. Uh, we deal with internet governance, BIDI is number one in that regard. And online content management is very hot topic uh, in the EU and also in Turkey. AI and it is implications, uh, but we prefer to focus a bit AI and legal tech and how AI will transform legal sector. Um, on the other side, AI and ethics and AI and liability or AI and fairness are other topics. And um, we work also on e-health, uh, which is very important during COVID time and electronic communication law, e-commerce, data protection, and e-privacy, uh, which is um, another draft regulation in the EU and has important um, implications uh, for Turkey. We work on that. We focus also child and youth privacy. Um, this year we started that project, but uh, we, we keep continue to work on that topic um, in 2021 too. 
and we work on fintechs, blockchain, and online advertising, cybersecurity and trust, the open banking or platform banking, data economy and data governance. And under that topic, um, data governance, we focus privacy enhancing technologies, differentiation between non-personal data and personal data, and differential privacy and homomorphic encryption, um, which is important to create data economy and IoT security and data protection. And on the lastly, digital services tax, which is also important for online platforms. And um, as Institute, we organize several seminars, trainings, conferences, webinar for the community. And um, I would like to mention again, this year we organize third edition of the Istanbul Privacy Symposium. And this year we focus AI emerging topic and regulatory issues, which will be held on for uh, December this year. Um, so I would like to um, back to Bedi and maybe he could add something. Thanks for this great overview. Yeah, this is fantastic. Such a uh, broad range of topics and uh, uh, I've always enjoyed um, uh, participating in the events you've organized and uh, can um, confirm that you have really pulled off uh, quite wonderful and very productive multi-stakeholder meetings. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always left very impressed and, and um, also learning from, from our Turkish friends and colleagues. So, But uh, maybe, maybe you have additions uh, or things you want to highlight from your work. Thank you. Thanks for this opportunity. It's a great. It's great to see you, and hope to see you in person whenever we overcome this COVID epidemic. Uh, in addition to data, we also started having visiting researchers within our institution. So it's a uh, development uh, from our part. And another important development has been in two, in 2018. Uh, IT law has been an independent department. Uh, we had our very uh, first chair at our faculty, and uh, the good thing is that we have inspired other universities to follow us, and major public uh, universities also, they have started establishing IT law departments, uh, so uh, this has been, uh, I think, a big, uh, the biggest achievement of our institution as at least setting the stage uh, in, uh, for IT law teaching and IT law research. Uh, and uh, also, as Leila mentioned, we are uh, organizing IT talks. The good thing about these IT talks is that we are keeping update, updating uh, the uh, sector, uh, academia, and it's a kind of our social responsibility and provides a kind of stakeholder engagement since we invite people from practice and academia. Uh, and uh, aside from uh, the uh, research, we are also uh, collaborating with uh, public uh, as well. Particularly, uh, we have provided uh, in input for uh, a general network and information security law, which will evolve into a kind of cyber security act. Uh, so uh, uh, in addition to uh, other research, we are also uh, trying to at least uh, setting the stage for legislative framework, trying to uh, provide a input of, uh, to legislative uh, processes. Uh, so uh, that's the news from my side. And again, it's really nice to see you again. Very good to see you. Um, just to maybe, as you were describing, Leila and also Betty pointed it out, you know, a lot has happened over the past few years in the space of internet and society, research centers and academic institutions. And uh, Betty just mentioned by way of example that there are many more institutions um, uh, and, you know, centers and departments um, uh, that have, uh, are, are focusing on digital issues, which is great. That is the capacity building that we also hope to contribute to. And I was just wondering, uh, Leila, if you uh, reflect a little bit on the uh, past few years, um, you mentioned uh, that the, the center was founded a couple of years ago. And, um, and now, you know, I feel back then we had um, different types of conversations where the you know, AI wasn't a big thing uh, for, for many of us in the policy space, although, of course, AI has been around for a long time um, uh, among experts. I, I was just wondering specifically also, 
considering um, uh, Turkey as a as a country and you know all the complexities um, around it. What's what's your sense? What has what has evolved? What has changed? How have the you know topics or interactions you have um, evolved over these years? Yeah, thank you, Urs. Um, maybe I could give a bit overview of uh, the events we held. The events uh, will reflect uh, the important topics uh, for yeah. Turkey. For example, the last IT talks we organized um, was on about online content moderation and data localization around the globe. Um, the topic is really important and um, Turkey also changed its internet law and added a few provisions in line with the German uh, content moderation law shortly, next DG. And, um, this is the really current and hot topic, and we, we would like to discuss with the community its implications and the legal framework, um, etc. And um, we also discuss um, since uh, we also discuss um, the European Union approach, and also Council of Europe's approach, and also other countries' approach, the regulatory approach. Uh, on AI. Um, this was also another IT talks uh, we organized. And the, another important topic is um, trust. Under that um, heading, we deal with trust services and um, particularly EID and blockchain use case. And um, in that regard, we invited uh, one of our colleagues from the Europe and we discuss um, EID and blockchain and also new trust services and, it is effect, and its effect to Turkish law system. Um, we also um, discuss with the community um, what would be the um, IP intellectual property problems when it comes to um, AI applications. And on the other side, we, we, are, we are talking about data economy and we try to do something in order to, in order to reach that. But on the other side, we put into practice different laws and regulations which blocks, which uh, impede that aim. And we wanted to discuss that point and we organized on March 2020 this year a conference uh, in collaboration with the EU Commission and Council of Europe and we discuss free flow of data, uh, dig digital trade, and data protection laws and regulations, and uh, it is effect on free uh, on digital economy. Um, we also wanted to highlight the importance of net neutrality, and we prepared the report and also organized another conference, uh, just because uh, in Turkey we don't have clear rules on net neutrality. But in practice, we have net neutrality. Um, we also wanted to highlight that point and um, show it has implications, possible implications to the community. We invited um, uh, also another colleague of us and we discussed data privacy, security, and monetization, global trends. Um, and also we discussed um, we also organize a round table on interplay between privacy and data economy. Um, then we wrote a book with one of my colleagues at the Institute, Ms. Aicha Atabe. Um, the uh, child abuse, uh, child particularly sexual abuse on the internet is really still a big problem. And we thought that uh, as, a, as an academic, we should have to do something on that point. And we decided to wrote a book on that. And I would love to uh, send a copy um, to you. Um, except that book, we, we decided to start a project called uh, Child and Youth Privacy. And under that topic, we um, conducted surveys and over uh, 1,000 people, uh, including kids and young people, 
um, after that survey, we prepared one pages or booklets and tried to tell them uh, how they how they protect themselves uh, themselves against the risks and threats on the internet and social media platforms, etc. Um, what is That's the great. yeah. And that, that's that's already a wonderful uh, wonderful overview of some of the um, trending topics, and also gives the sense how um, the issues have evolved. If I may just add a, another some sort of um, angle to the discussion, uh, I was wondering whether you could comment a little bit what's happening in Turkey, particularly in Istanbul, but also in other cities, in terms of entrepreneurship and and uh, local startups. Um, I remember from my past visits that there is a real excitement also developing, you know, new business models and coming up with digital services. I was just curious to hear uh, how that ecosystem is developing and, you know, also perhaps uh, where you see the role of regulation um, that can maybe, you know, play a role in, in helping to develop the digital economy. Maybe Bidi, you can add something about that. Thanks uh, again. Uh, before uh, proceeding to that uh, question, uh, let me also add that there is also an increasing trend in judiciary part uh, for using online dispute resolution, and also there is an ongoing project for electronic uh, uh, proceedings uh, litigation. So it's also a very hot issue, and uh, we also uh, have some uh, projects on that. We are also monitoring what's keeping going these task projects. Uh, so. Uh, uh, we can say that this uh, COVID uh, epidemic has uh, uh, facilitate, facilitated this digital transformation and uh, we, it managed to uh, us to overcome certain prejudices. So uh, this is the very first part. Uh, when it comes to your question, there are different kinds of incentives and uh, also there are also, uh, ongoing uh, construction uh, in different parts of Turkey with regard to uh, techno park, we call them, and a, a very specific regulation uh, providing incentive in terms of employment, in terms of taxes, social security benefits, etc. It's going very well and also there are some companies, even unicorns that have been sold in game sector, perhaps they have also uh, had seen uh, at the news, uh, and they are all uh, has emerged from, uh, have emerged from these techno parks. Uh, and uh, in uh, relation to this uh, pandemic, uh, there has been some uh, uh, incentives to work from re remote, remote working. Uh, there are some kind of specific regulations uh, uh, trying to uh, make the environment more friendly for particularly software developers. Uh, and again, uh, there are further tax reductions and uh, incentives for uh, employment and social security benefits. So I can say that uh, it's going very well, particularly we can say that there's a new area of startup law, uh, the, the companies that are really interested, they are uh, really investing in this area. And in overall economy also, we can see that uh, traditional companies are also uh, have uh, started their uh, projects uh, for IT transformation or making investment in tech uh, industry. Also, uh, trying uh, it's a really good thing to see that there is a transition going and at that level, which is also supported by the public policies. I cannot say it's perfect, but uh, we have really good case uh, cases, really good uh, uh, stories, uh, success stories. Uh, so uh, this is the story from that. Uh, this is our news from the, that part. Very helpful, thank you. Another um, maybe a question, also uh, looking at the work your your institute, what you're doing. Um, and you described it before, you do a lot of comparative research, right? You're um, looking at Europe, and uh, but you're also um, uh, looking at other global developments. And I was just wondering, overall, what's your sense? You know, often there is a, 
as a very simplified some sort of narrative that says on the one hand side there's China with you know one particular approach to digital technology and and you know a rule um, bylaw and so an own interpretation of what that means then uh, there is the US with a strong emphasis on innovation and letting you know lead by technology and some sort of um, uh, look at law maybe not as the first uh, first place to go um, and then essentially Europe with a um, slightly different approach or some some people call it the third way uh, where it's about you know obviously GDPR being a great example and um, where it's more about human-centric technology and um, and focus on on using law as some sort of a tool to put in safeguards and and um, make sure um, you know human rights get protection and the like. So I was just wondering, as you do so much comparative work in different areas, where do you see some sort of the the, the interesting or most influential things happening, whether it's in financial service regulation? that you mentioned or whether it comes to privacy are you mostly looking to europe or are there other places where where your work uh, picks up some interesting trends and developments um well i can say um the most we, we follow up very closely to the europe um there is certain strategies and uh, plans declared by the government and or uh, law system uh, we should have to follow the EU legislation and we harmonize our law system with the EU. Therefore, um, the first point is EU, what's going on we, um, before would we do anything else. We analyze what's going on, um, for example, the Digital Services Act and also uh, um, still draft data act or data governance act, etc. cetera. Um, these are important to us. So therefore, first we look at what's going on at the EU end. But um, on the other side, um, we need to know um, what is going, um, what, they, what the people think, uh, for example, on AI or facial recognition or other kind of uh, privacy issues in different geographies. In, to that extent, NOC is one of the wonderful platform to gather all kind of information, to learn different uh, thoughts, opinion of the people from different locations. And um, I, I, um, I'm always happy to ask NOC, uh, the friends, uh, what is the situation in your country? And would you like to share with me the laws and regulations or your approach or strategy reports or whatever else? It is a wonderful tool and platform to know uh, and to gain a 360 degree view um, on, um, on related matters. Therefore, um, thank you so much. In 2012, you established NOC and you include um, all um, related centers and institutions under the, that umbrella. And um, so whenever we work on related topic, we also use, we also ask NOC people um, and try to understand their approach and uh, combine the combine all related information, then try to find our way, our own way. What a wonderful uh, way also to conclude our conversation. And I, I, I'll give you the last word, maybe just in a second. Um, uh, Building up on uh, the NOC and as a platform and a community of, for knowledge sharing, I was wondering um, what are the best ways for um, centers or individual researchers who want to learn more about the work your center is, your institute is doing, um, but also, uh, you know, maybe learn more about developments in, in Turkey. Uh, what are the best ways to, to follow your work? Is it, you know, at, um, joining your online events now that we're in this mode um, or is it to you know um, uh, to check out your website what would you recommend and um, of course also if, if the upcoming uh, third privacy symposium will be virtual I'm wondering whether there is a is a way to be a, a fly on the wall 
Yeah. Um, our website is um, publicly available and we have English version. And we also, as an institute, try to publish more English um, uh, documents. Therefore, it is important to publish, uh, to share uh, the knowledge or opinion with others. Therefore, we publish several English uh, written reports um, or documents. And we use social media very uh, active. Um, or institutes, uh, we have accounts on LinkedIn, we have accounts on Twitter, Facebook, uh, and Instagram. And um, it is the easiest way to follow up uh, you know, see members um, using social media and also using their websites, etc. But on the other side, uh, we are a very collaborative community. Uh, whenever I ask something or email um, to other NOC members, they are very helpful and they are um, um, they they answer my questions or they try to help me. Um, they do everything in that regard. So therefore, there are several ways uh, to reach uh, to be, uh, to reach us, and uh, several ways to know what's going on um, at the related institutes or research centers. In great, Betty, you want to add a few sentences? Yes, we. Uh... Uh, our website is active. We are trying to publish everything in English and also uh, we have also decided to contribute to international literature. So we are trying to tr uh, translate uh, within our institutions uh, major laws uh, for at least to provide an overview of what's keeping going in terms of legislative level in Turkey. Uh, our social media account is also active. Uh, we are also collaborating through these accounts. Uh, our website, uh, we publish everything in PDF in electronic form. We are trying to avoid uh, classic uh, traditional publishing so that we are trying to make our works accessible. So this is uh, also uh, our priority uh, so that we can uh, keep in touch, we can uh, collaborate uh, and we can uh, work together. Thanks again. Fantastic. Thank you so much for uh, this conversation. Time was too short as, as ever, uh, but just wonderful to hear uh, what you're up to these days and get a few samples of the work uh, ahead. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, again, I hope we'll see each other in person before too long. In the meantime, my best wishes and uh, thanks for all your contributions. It's good seeing you. Thank, Thank you. you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.